Welcome to the High School Highlight Reel. Alex Rising, Kennedy Harmon. Kennedy, I hate lightning. It serves no purpose other than to ruin our High School Highlight Reel and High School football. But there were games played and some action to show you, so we got to get that to you. Yeah, well, you know, me and Lightning, not really friends right now. We are all trying to go to multiple <laughs> games, bringing you as much coverage as we can, going about four stops in the night. Let's just start at Lafayette at Scott County. Yeah, the two split last season's meetings. Cards taking around one of the regular season generals winners in the playoffs. It's the High School Highlight Reel. Game of the week to Toyota Stadium. We go for the action and much more. There are plenty of festivities after the action. That's Walker Wood finding Quinton Brown. Brown does the rest. Get off me, bro. Jersey pulling ain't bringing down Brown tonight. He goes the distance to the house for six. Then the lightning came not too long after that. Fans leave. The ADs talk. Then it's the hometown PA that says Scott County wins it 25 20. Everyone goes home. Cards win. That's at least what well, the folks in Georgetown are saying. Our Matt Groves is up there and has more. Matt, try to help us figure this thing out. Clock here at Toyota Stadium paused at 11:04. The score 25 to 20 in favor of the home team, the Scott County Cardinals. Of course, there's a reason for that. That clock's going to be paused likely for the next few hours, maybe even into the next day. Not unlike many schools across Central Kentucky, impacted by weather, like lightning across the area. That's what causing what's causing the delays here on the field at Georgetown College, where the Scott County Cardinals call home. Earlier in the game, the Scott County Cardinal Band, the biggest band in the land, taking to the field. The only thunder in sight, that of their footsteps as they cross the 50-yard line. Of course, that would be replaced by other types of thunder, and the band would eventually leave. Many people leaving the stands as instructed to do so with the danger of lightning in the area. Now, the rule for lightning is that after each strike, a clock delaying the start of the game has to be kept for 30 minutes before play can be returned onto the field. So it's looking like the high school highlight reel is going to stretch out into your Saturday. Reporting here for your game of the week that wasn't Matt Groves, ABC 36 Sports. Yeah, by the way, Lafayette is set to protest this thing if indeed Scott County puts it down in the record books as a victory. Madison Central Election and Catholic, this video courtesy of the good folks over at Prep Spin. Javari Hughley on the halfback toss to the outside up the sideline for six. Central on top early at Joseph K. Ford Stadium. The Knights in big trouble early on, though. Central up 7 0, looking for more in the fourth and goal at the end of the first quarter. Lex Cath gets the big stop. Tack on some field goals later for the Indians. 13 0 the score when this one went to the lightning delay. Game picked back up at 11. That was still our score then. GRC visiting Bourbon County. Bourbon County 0-3 to start. Colonels working slowly to the down. First down here for John Hodge and the boys. Jacob Smith makes the movement a little slower than Bourbon County. That's bringing the wood right there on the sack. Colonels bounce back, though. Check out the Thoroughbreds and Adidas Springsfield. You know the Keeneland September yearling sale is still going on right now, Alex. I do. 70 yards for this horse. For six. Yeah, play suspended but picked back up at 11 o'clock at that one as well. Tate's Creek coming off the big 44 nothing drubbing of Henry Clay Commodores hosting undefeated Madison Southern. No rain delay early. Then Tate's Creek turned into a river. Cameron Workman to Jackson Beerman. No problem with the rain, still airing it out at Roy Walton Stadium. Look at it. Eventually, Beerman just gets tired and says, Look, I'm out of this thing. Let's go down. Do it again, yeah. though. This time, Workman up top, down the sideline. Beerman goes up and gets it. Fights off double coverage for the Eagles. Then Dylan Adkins with the big time effort coming near side. Doesn't even need the receiver to block on this thing. Lays the wood, drops the shoulder, pop in TDTC. That's where we leave it thanks to the weather. Play will resume tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, 27 14. Your score. Henry Clay trying to erase the Tate's Creek game from memory last week. Devils at the Bell Tonight against Knox County Central. And the home opener was going fine earlier on. Check out Michael McMullen on the reverse. Full the Panther defense. Scotty Rutz on the boys. And it will be just a little bit as well. Six points nonetheless, despite the fact he may have stepped out of bounds on that. Didn't matter anyway. Lightning ruined everything. Tied at seven. But that game was canceled. Everything happens, so don't pay attention to it. Well, that game might have been canceled. <laughs> this one didn't, though. Nelson County at Woodford County. Lightning once again ruining everybody's fun. Dennis Johnson uh. and the Jackets were... Having a lot of fun. It was 29 nothing when the ABC 36 camera rolled up, and that's where it would stay. Jackets will get the win in the shortened game. 29 nothing the score at the half. That will go down as the final in the record books. But stick around. We head to Frankfurt, Nicholasville, Stanford, and Danville right after this break. We're going to try to bring some more football. Plus, we're going to be <laughs> back in try. town and make a stop off in Lawrenceburg as well for Franklin County and Anderson County. Stick around.
Franklin County won the last two against Anderson County, but before that, the Bearcats took care of the Flyers in district action when both programs are back in Class 5A. But Franklin County won the two before the Bearcats won both of those meetings in 2013. Yeah, so it's been pretty even. To Lawrenceburg we go for the 2016 edition of this thing at Holly Warford Junior Stadium. In the first half, the Flyers Cody Lofton going deep, 31-yard line for the first down, nothing doing. The Anderson County's Blake Franklin will get the interception, picking off Franklin County, and that's pretty much what we know because play was suspended and picked back up around 11 o'clock. Hopefully we'll have a score for you perhaps by tomorrow. Who knows? Staying out west for Western Hills at Frankfurt. The first half, it's the Panthers cutting down the 20-point deaths at 13. Simon Bond takes to the house for six, but the Wolverines would respond right back. Wandale Robinson cashing it in for the touchdown to make it 28-15 at that point. Hills wins another one, 55-28, the final tower field. Wolverines now 4 on the season. That is the best start in program history since 2009. Garrett County in the jungle of East Jess. But where's everyone going? Home. That's where they're going. More lightning delays. East Jess and Garrett, they, they're trying to finish the game with, of course, no one in their stands. Yeah. They picked it back up at 11. It was 5 minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Garrett up 24-15. All right, let's take it on out to Clay County out of Manchester tonight to take on West Jess. Tigers, they didn't have a good trip, though. Clay County's sophomore offensive lineman, Logan Bowling, was blindsided, knocked out, had to be taken to the hospital. Saw him in the ambulance. He was moving and coherent. Coaches say it's just precautionary. Colts go on to win it 21-0 over the Tigers. All right, 0-4 to start the season. It's time for the Pates to put a check in the win column. Hosting. North Laurel, can they do it? Pates out front, Tanner Mackinich, hand on to Trey Carey, drives it right up the middle, crosses the line. Too cool to celebrate though, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because points got on the board for Lincoln County. North Laurel coming back at you. Jags, Cole McWhorter, play action. The Pates defense, they fall for it. McWhorter on the keeper, jukes David Brock, cuts left, he's gone, puts the guns up, fires them off, but not so fast, Jags. Pates finally get their check. Final score, 47-25, Lincoln County over North Laurel. And it's a ghost town in title town. Lightning delay in Danville with Boyle County hosting Collins. Rebels, though, decided to wait it out, picked up play. Sitting in halftime right now, Boyle up 35-17.